What's going on, guys? I'm Joel Lorenzi, and I'm breaking down Oklahoma basketball this week. Just kind of looking at some of the sets they like to run on offense, things they like to do on defense, their tendencies, and how it might align with Mizzou entering their Saturday game in Indianapolis. Now, Oklahoma is great at playing defense without fouling, at least a lot of non-steal turnovers. They get in and are good in transition. Uh, big man Brady Manick gives teams fits on offense with his, kind of his versatility and his fit everywhere, and they hardly turn the ball over. Now, these are our three best players on the left. You've got the big man, Brady Manick, and the two lead guards, the veteran Austin Reeves and sophomore Davion Harmon. This team really has no outstanding NBA talent, but they're a great cohesive unit. And it all starts with Reeves. Now, the guy can score from anywhere, one of the most balanced stat lines in the Big 12, but he's especially good in the open floor and getting downhill. Now here, uh, Manic is setting the goal screen, never really catching a body, and Reeves is preparing himself for when West Virginia ices the screen. Now Culver overcommits and takes a step too far, and Reeves is just too quick and gathers to get to the middle and find Gibson. Now here they predict his movement, they ice again, but he just collects himself for an impressive finish. It's tough stuff. So Harriman, he gets, he gets the rebound. He's going to go coast to coast. Uh, he's 6'5", well built. So, I mean, he's a moving train sometimes, depending on who he plays, and he's just slithery. Now, here he's going to recognize the slow George Condes in his vicinity, so he calls for a quick screen and gets a switch and abuses him. I mean, come on, that's a kill. Just some average ball screen action here, uh, but Oklahoma loves a slip. So, you can see number three in the corner just commits to the slip, and he's too far to contest the three. So, you're going to see here that ice again. And Reeves is just so good at attacking space. He finds Harmon where Harmon comes in. And that midi pull-up attacking the closeout is just where he's so good at. Here's a slip again from Kirk Quaith. And, I mean, Davion Harmon is so good at finding. They head way too hard. Solo Young is nowhere to be found. Good feed. Now, OU loves moving the ball around. They're going to kill two birds with one stone here. Quaith is going to get the switch with that screen. And he's going to slip it. And there's no chance that any universe kind of gets back in time. I saw some of the slipping they can do when Quaithers in the game, but this is the real truth right here. Look where Manning catches the ball from. I mean, Tillman's going to have to pick him up all the way out there. And look at this. OU rarely takes dumb shots, and they're never going to take a look that's out of rhythm. And I mean, Manning needs no space for the jumper. Now, I do like to run Manning off some screens. Here's him at the free throw line. They like to do this a lot. Harkless pins his man down, and he just has a wide open look. They do that often. I mean, he smokes it, but he's getting looks like that often. Here he's again at the free throw line. And he just pinned down again. I mean, this is this is money. They could do this all game. Here they're just gonna reverse the ball a bit. And you see, man is gonna sit at the elbow, wait his turn. He's gonna set that screen. While they ice, he fades. He gets a very clean look. And this is where OU spacing becomes a problem for other teams. You see, they're gonna send four guys out here. And look at uh, Harkless at the top. He's got that post up. So the man bumps down away from Manic, and you can't give him that much space. Seriously. Now going to the defensive end. Uh, they're really good at sliding their feet, staying in front of guys, and really avoiding fouls. You see Quay uh, takes on the switch really well there. He's going to get a good contest at the rim here. And they're just going to get in transition. And they run the break so well. I mean, Harkless pushes here. Jalen Hill can finish above the rim. That's an easy buck. We're going to talk about Manic as a liability at times and uh, some ball screen coverage and just rotating at times. So you see it. Harmon has to make that uh, rotation because Manic is nowhere to be found. And that's just a great, great rotation by Harmon. He gets rewarded. He makes a sweet move on that end. Now, as soon as they're pretty middle of the pack in terms of uh, steals, but they do play high in the lane sometimes. You get stuff like this. I mean, some of the some of the craftiest guys in the Big 12 in transition. And this is where the non-steal turnovers come in. Uh, Gibson's going to make a decision here. He knows that Garrett's playing behind the defense, but he willingly takes the charge. That's just great defense. Another great defensive possession where it features a non-steal turnover. Just moving their feet. Jalen Hill does a great job moving his feet. You see, they're trying to run this guy off a pin down, the shooter. And he never gets the chance because Jalen Hill moves his feet and gets that offensive foul drawn. Now, breaking down some of their weaknesses, they tend to drop on ball screen coverage. Uh, they like to just let guys shoot sometimes. It's a gussy move, and they end up giving up a ton of threes because of it. Uh, they shoot well from the free throw line, but they hardly get there. There isn't enough attack in the rim or selling contact. Uh, there's hardly any rim protection, specifically when Manic is in the game. It's a big problem, especially against good bigs, such as Jeremiah Tillman and 
Uh, same goes for rebounding when Manning is around. OU isn't the worst rebounding team, but there are there are times guys will just stand around and leave Manning out to dry or whoever it, uh, it may be. This is where Manning becomes a problem. Uh, this is Derek Culver, one of the best bigs in the Big 12. And they have Manning playing him honestly. And perhaps it's because of the games he had. He had some bad shooting performances against Oklahoma the last few times they saw each other. But, I mean, clip after clip you're going to see here, Manning is just a 6'9 baby against uh, Derek Culver. I mean, look at this. I mean, he literally cannot mess with him. They're going to try to maybe send a double and stunt at one point. This is a high post touch. And, I mean, this is a free runway for straight Derek Culver buckets. Same thing again. They're going to find a way to get to him. Gibson is going to try to uh, dig down. But, I mean, there's not much he can do at this point. And look how deep Culver catches it here. I mean, this is stuff Tillman is very capable of. If they play him as honest as uh, they're playing Culver here, it's going to be a bad look. Same thing again. He had 28 this game, by the way. I mean, Tillman is very capable of something like that. Now, again, Manning is just too small down there. This is Solo Young of Iowa State. Not the most dominant big man, but enough of a presence to where Manning has to go in full denial and try to fully deny him. Which is bad enough already. And Solo Young seals them off and they get an open look right there. Now again, watch how Manic fights for his life trying to deny Young and Armin has to bump down and they just make the right skip pass to the corner for the open three. Now here's Manic away from the backside again. We talked about him as a liability and he's just too slow to make uh, a run at Abaji. And when the time he does recover, it's an M1. And Manning's physicality becomes a problem here again when he's getting out rebounded by Young two or three times on one possession. And it doesn't help that people are standing around, hardly helping him. So I hate this possession for OU and Manic as well. Manic has to close this gap right here in the driving lane. He doesn't. He barely even rips at the ball. And nobody boxes out, so he gets a putback. Another one-on-one -on -one here, and the defense is pure shit. I mean, if Mitch had better touch, he likely makes that. But guys are standing around. Jalen Wilson swoops in for the putback. Here's one of several instances you'll see where they just drop and sag shooters. Like, there's no ball screen here, so they're not going to drop, but they're going to sag him all the way. Like, And he drills it. He makes him pay. Same thing here. They're going to sag. He doesn't make them pay. But, I mean, guys from Mizzou are going to take these looks. And they're not the best three-point shooting team, but they're going to knock down some looks if you give them to them. But here's OU playing high in the lanes again. They do like to pressure ball handlers when they can. But, I mean, again, Garrett wide open, and they just don't care. Now that you've seen what Oklahoma can do on both ends, it's up to you to determine whether or not they can defeat Mizzou to advance to the second round come Saturday. Till next time, I'm Joel Lorenzi coming at you with another breakdown.